Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss about a very interesting architecture for batch ETL workloads using AWS services and the best practices which you can follow to improve the performance of your big data pipeline which is processing batch data. Okay. So without any further delay, let us directly jump into that reference architecture. And this particular architecture I have seen many companies follow. So let us try to understand what is that. So let's start from complete left hand side where our data is sitting in on-premise system. Maybe this is suppose for example database. Okay. And in on-premise we are having some files also which we need to ingest and process it. Okay. Now the database data to ingest that in cloud system we can use scoop which is one of the very powerful tool to ingest the data from database stable like oracle mysql server etc and then load in s3 or hdfs right so some companies use pyspark some use talent even python and scoop based framework also i have seen the different companies are using okay so using this kind of frameworks they load the data in this particular layer which is termed as s3 raw layer okay why raw layer because here whatever data it ingests that is not processed data that is just raw data okay so we should always save the raw data so that in future if something happens wrong in the downstream jobs and we want to backtrack that and get that older raw data we can easily get from s3 raw layer okay right and whatever files are sitting in on-premise system that we can anyway directly ingest in S3 using some talent based system or ETL tools or using Python code or PySpark code. We can read the files from the on-prem system and load in S3 raw layer. Okay. Suppose the files are generated by some vendor company. So obviously the safest secured option is SSH based file transfer protocol or SFTP. Using that we can ingest the data in S3 raw layer. Okay. So here we don't apply any transformation or cleansing on our data. Now what we do for running big data batch pipeline, we launch EMR cluster. Okay. Now this EMR cluster read the raw layer data, process it, maybe for example, clean the data, make sure the schema is matching or some data validation it does and then it load in another S3 layer which is termed as S3 process layer. Okay. Why it is called process layer? Because from different source system from S3 ingestion layer, the EMR is reading those data and after data validation and data quality check, it is dumping in this S3 layer and whatever files or whatever data is sitting in this particular S3 layer, those we will be using in applying business logic or for transformation or for processing. That's why it is called S3 process layer. Okay. Right. I hope up to this you are getting it. Now from S3 process layer, again we read the data in EMR, maybe we are using PySpark for our batch ETL workloads. So in PySpark data frame, we will read the data from different S3 paths and then we will apply the business logic, maybe joining, filtering, in number of transformations we can apply and then here finally the process data we can write in S3 consumption layer. Okay, this is called consumption layer. Why this is called consumption layer? Because after applying data validation, then after applying business logic, now the data whatever sitting in this S3 layer is ready for data analysis or business reporting or BI requirements. Okay, right. So now what we do from this S3 consumption layer? Maybe some companies create some external table pointing to different S3 folders and using alter refresh command, they load in Snowflake external table. Or for example, we can execute copy into command to load the S3 process data in Snowflake internal table. And then from that Snowflake table, we can load the data in Tableau. Okay. And this is basically our Snowflake. Right. And in Snowflake, we can create different BI metrics as per business requirement. Okay. Right. Now from the same consumption layer, if required in EMR cluster only, the data scientist team can launch Jupyter Notebook and train different machine learning models related to NLP and all. Okay. So the consumption layer data is also consumed by data scientist. Okay. Right. This is another consumer. 
or else if you want to do ad hoc analytics on this particular data maybe some data analyst or marketing analyst team want to do some analysis in ad hoc manner so what you can do on that s3 consumption layer you can point a glue crawler and from that crawler you can populate a catalog table and then that catalog data you can query using athena in ad hoc manner and if required from athena also you can load the data in tableau and create some bi tools so this is another ad hoc pipeline which many companies follow okay right so this is more or less the overall view of a reference big data architecture which pattern is followed by many companies right now we understood this particular component that reference architecture for batch etl workloads now let us try to understand the best practices okay or what kind of questions can be asked in a data engineering interview if you explain this particular pipeline okay that we need to understand so obviously first point is that many companies what they does that reading the data from database and writing in s3 raw layer this can be a monotonous process for multiple tables we might need to do same activity so what generally company does for this particular data ingestion they create a generalized framework okay so that sometime become metadata driven so here i can write metadata driven framework okay that framework can be using scoop pyspark talent python whatever right now in interview if you explain that i used metadata driven framework and just we configured the source table source user id password and the destination s3 location and that particular job ingested the data that is not sufficient okay you need to have in depth idea about how this metadata driven framework is working because you might be asked some questions from this particular framework how you validated that whether the data is ingested properly or not how you did auditing how you did recon validation how you did comparison in between source count and destination count all these things which are available in this metadata driven framework that also you should have a clear understanding before going to data engineering interview that is one of the best practice now another best practice is file format okay very important there are different file formats followed in big data world for example avro parquet orc json csv etc etc in which layer you are using what file format and why you are using what is the advantages and disadvantages of different file formats on that you should have a clear understanding that why it is used okay right then partitioning you should be doing partitioning in each s3 layer properly so that the data extraction and the computation can be faster okay and that will obviously improve your big data pipeline with respect to time consumption it will be working much faster if you do partitioning properly okay right i hope you understood this now the next very important point is as i already discussed there are two kind of emr one is permanent another one is transient so what is permanent emr permanent emr cluster are those emr clusters which are running 24 by 7 365 days we are running all our heavy spark jobs in that permanent cluster okay now what problem we might face in permanent cluster that is basically suppose in a heavy rush time multiple spark jobs are running and which are consuming huge resource then obviously in a single emr you might have resource crunch okay right and suppose a emr is running 24 by 7 if suppose there is some ideal time then unnecessary you have to provide the cost for that ideal time also right so now it is many companies follow transient emr cluster based approach that is launch the cluster whenever we need to execute this part job and then terminate the cluster once all the jobs are executed successfully so how to launch transient cluster how to configure it properly on that you should have a clear idea okay so if you implement transient cluster then obviously that can optimize your pipeline because different different spark jobs will be running in different different clusters so you should not get any resource crunch issue which you might face in permanent cluster right so one is file format one is partitioning one is transient emr cluster one is metadata driven ingestion framework these four points you should have a clear idea while explaining this pipeline and another important point which i have drawn here this is basically denoting one rds what this rds is doing so suppose you have launched one transient emr cluster here you are using hive in your computation now hive metadata where it will be storing suppose you are telling that i will store the hive metadata in the emr cluster itself 
Now suppose something happens in that EMR cluster. Suppose the EMR cluster is down, then the whole Hive data also we cannot access. Because Hive data I can only access when Hive metadata is accessible, right? So we should not store the Hive metadata in internal meta store for EMR. Rather we should use external metadata storage. So what we can do as a best practice, all the Hive metadata we can store in a separate MySQL RDS which is running outside EMR cluster. So that way even if, if you are using transient EMR cluster, suppose you launch the cluster, it can access all the Hive metadata because the RDS is sitting outside, it can compute its job and then the EMR cluster will terminate. But post its termination also, we can easily have all the Hive metadata available in MySQL RDS because that is not getting down. Next time suppose this EMR is getting launched, it can again read that Hive table data using Hive metadata which is sitting in external meta store. Even some companies use AWS Glue catalog also for Hive external meta store. You can use that perfectly fine. But you should have a clear understanding how to configure external meta store for Hive and what is its advantage that you are creating Hive table in one cluster. From another cluster also you can access if you are pointing your Hive metadata in some external meta store. That is its beauty. If your EMR cluster down, still you can access the Hive data because your Hive metadata is sitting outside EMR cluster, right? So I hope you got it that external metadata storage also plays a very vital role in a very good big data pipeline design for batch processing. Okay. And now this particular pipeline can be obviously used for data analytics or business intelligence purpose. And here also that three popular layers, one is ingestion layer, one is transform layer, one is data visualization layer. All three layers are available in this pipeline also. Let me just show you with some different color. So I have taken this purple color. So here you see that we can maybe draw a line like this way. Okay. Anything sitting in the left hand side, this can be termed as ingest layer. Okay. Because here we are ingesting the data from on-premise system or vendor system to our AWS. Now from this particular S3 layer to pretty much this particular layer, we can tell this particular part as transform layer, right? Because here we are transforming the data, we are applying all the business logics, right? And this layer where we are loading the data in cloud data warehouse platform and building dashboards in Tableau using those data warehouse data, this layer you can call as analyze or we can tell visualization. analysis or visualization layer. Okay. So this is how you can explain a proper big data pipeline and I hope the important points also you got it. This is all for my this video. Already in my previous videos, I have discussed several components and key factors in batch processing whatever I highlighted today also. You can check my big data pipeline design using AWS playlist where you can get all these concepts in detail. So this is all what I wanted to discuss. I hope it will be helpful for you. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share and comment. Subscribe our channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of our latest videos. Thank you for watching.